Welcome back. This video is about some kinematics definitions and some equations. We've already talked about distance, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the, the definition and the symbols and the units and displacement. That, that'll be the case for the next slide as well. And we'll also have some new stuff uh, in this video as well. Distance we can define as the sum total of position change without regard to direction. So, um, for example, if you walk 1.5 miles, 1.5 kilometers to school and 1.5 kilometers back, that means you've walked a distance of three kilometers. The symbol that we use for, for distance is a delta x. That delta is a Greek letter, capital delta, and that just means change in. So anytime you see the Greek letter delta, that means change in whatever follows afterwards. And x is the symbol that we use for position. So the change of position, uh, delta x, that's what we use for distance. And it's measured in standard SI units of meters. Displacement is the net change in position, but that's a vector. It includes direction. And so when we write that with the symbol, we write delta, which means change in, and x for position. But we put the vector symbol above the x to indicate that we're talking about displacement instead of distance. And it's again measured in, in meters. So an example of that would be you start down here, you walk three meters that direction, four meters that direction, your net displacement from start to finish is five meters. And to describe that properly, you'd have to give a direction as well. So it looks like it's in the positive y direction. So I wrote five meters positive y direction, or maybe it's pointing north. So I could write five meters north. Speed and velocity. Speed is defined as the rate of change in position without regard to direction. And the abbreviation we use for speed is a script or cursive, V. And it's measured in meters per second. One equation that you definitely need to write down on your equation card, on your toolbox where you keep your physics tools, is this equation for average speed. So V sub average is delta x over t. That's the total distance divided by the total time. That will give you the average speed. Velocity, remember, is the rate of change in position, including direction. Velocity is a vector. And so when we, we, we abbreviate velocity, we write V, a script V again, but we put a little arrow above that to indicate that it's a vector quantity and that the direction matters. It's also measured in standard SI units of meters per second. And so you should also put on your equation card, your toolbox, this equation for average velocity. The average velocity is the displacement divided by the time to make that displacement. So average velocity is displacement divided by time. Let's look at an example of that. Just a simple one. A velocity example. Maybe you recall, I don't think you're uh, too young to remember this, but in the 2008 Olympics, uh, Jamaican Usain Bolt ran the 100 meters in 9.69 seconds. If we assume that he ran in the positive direction, whatever direction that was that he ran, we'll call it positive, I want you to calculate his average velocity. And one way to do this, and the, the method I'd like you to use, at least to start out, is the method that we sometimes call the guess method. Now this isn't just guessing an answer, it's actually an abbreviation for five different words. So G and U is givens and unknowns, E is equation, S is substitute, and the second S is solve. So the first thing you should do when you see one of these word problems is to try to apply the guess method. Write down your givens and your unknowns. What information are you given in the problem, and what information are you looking for? And so I wrote down that we knew the displacement was 100 meters in the positive direction, and we know the time is 9.69 seconds. It's the time it took him to run that 100 meters, and we're looking for this average velocity. We're looking for that average velocity. The equation that I want to write down over here is an equation that hopefully contains all three of these variables, all the unknowns and all the knowns. And I have one, I just told you on the previous slide, and you wrote on your card, and that's the average velocity equation. So I just write that equation down. I don't plug in any numbers yet. I just write the equation down that I'm going to use. In the next step, substitute, then I'm going to replace the knowns with uh, the information that I have over here in my given and unknown column. And so the delta x is uh, 100 meters, and the time is 9.69 seconds. And then the final step will solve. So go ahead and take your calculator and divide 100 
by 9.69. And your calculator might spit out something like this, 10.3199174. And that's in meters over seconds, so meters per second. That's the standard unit for velocity. And now we need to round that answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. And for us, um, since we're doing division, it's always the least number of significant figures I have in any of my data. So this one has five, and that one has three, so I'll round it to three because that's the smaller one. So 10.3 meters per second is the average velocity. I should have put my arrow there and my plus sign. You can add that on your notes. Another definition, a new one today, is the definition of acceleration. Now this is a little different than what it is uh, when you say accelerate with um, just talking with your friends. It means something very particular in physics. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in velocity. And since velocity is a vector, acceleration is also a vector. And so we can write that, um, we can abbreviate acceleration with a lowercase a and a vector symbol. That's what we use. And then the units are strange, but you'll see why they exist here in a second. They're meters per second, that's the, the velocity change, divided by a second. So meters per second per second, or you can write it as meters per second squared. That's the same thing. So acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time. That is the delta V divided by T. Or, and you probably want to write this one, these, both of these uh, boxed equations down on your toolbox, on your equation card. Uh, this one will be very useful. This says the final minus the original velocity divided by the time is the acceleration. We'll probably use this one more uh, than the other. Um, just remember, this is different from the common use. In physics, acceleration can mean speeding up, it can mean slowing down, which is kind of strange, or it can mean changing direction. All of those things would indicate that the, that the object is accelerating, if it speeds up, if it slows down, or if it changes direction. Uh, just to remind you, uh, another way to think about it is there are three controls on a car that can cause a change in velocity and therefore an acceleration. Those three controls are the gas pedal, which hopefully causes you to speed up, the brake pedal, which hopefully causes you to slow down, and the steering wheel, which hopefully causes you to change direction. Let's look at one example of this acceleration equation, and that'll be it for the video. Let's say we have a car and it starts from rest and attains a velocity of positive 20 meters per second in a time of five seconds. Determine the car's acceleration. We'll use the guess method again. So G and U are givens and unknowns. So the original velocity is zero. I know that because it says in the problem, it starts from rest. If you see that phrase starting from rest, that gives you a piece of information. In this case, it's the original or the starting velocity. The final velocity is positive 20 meters per second. The time is five seconds and we're looking for the acceleration. Whoops. <laughs> well, that'll be one to remember. The equation that, that we're going to use hopefully contains these four, <laughs> these four pieces. Um, they're now contained in my head. Uh, and that equation is the equation that was on the previous slide. Then we substitute the values that we know. So 20 n for final, zero for original, five for time. And then we divide 20 divided, or 20 minus zero is 20. And 20 divided by five is four. And then we have to determine how to round it. And since we always go by the lowest number of sig figs, I think that's this one. This one only has two significant digits. The 20.0 has three. So we'll round the acceleration to two significant digits. 